Hey, Penny Lane here. I teach contractors and their bookkeepers how to set up and use QuickBooks in a way that allows them to get everything done they need to do efficiently and get the reports they need out of QuickBooks to make brilliant decisions and more money. Today's quick tip is how to make a journal entry when you do job costing. We all know that the journal entry form does not have a place to enter the item. This creates a problem in recording journal entries when job costs are involved because if you do it here, you'll notice on your job cost reports that you're going to have a line item called no item. And that's not very helpful, is it? So I'm going to show you a little workaround tip that will help you make journal entries the right way. Here it is. You're going to actually use the check form. Now, when you think about it, the check form in QuickBooks in the background when you're recording things on any of the forms in QuickBooks actually is creating journal entries in the background. So you can totally use this form to make a journal entry and yet still have access to the items. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that on your chart of accounts you have a bank account called the adjustment register. And the adjustment register is where you're going to make any kinds of adjustments like this. When you use the check form, you know that when you create a positive, it actually, on the check form, it creates a debit, right? A positive debit the expense account. So when you create a negative on the check form, you create a credit. If you get too bogged down by the debits and credits idea, you just kind of know that when you're on the check form and you do a positive thing here, it makes an expense happen, right? So if you want to make an expense happen, it needs to be a positive. It could get a little more confusing with the debits and credits for other types of entries, but generally you're going to be affecting job costs. So if you want to affect the job cost positively, you're going to use a positive number. If you want to affect it negatively, you'll use a negative number on the check form. Let me show you an example. Let's say that the owner took some materials for a job um, to the local landfill and he needs to get this, he had to pay for cash. He didn't have a check on him or whatever, or they didn't take checks. That's actually happened at uh, the local landfill. So he had to use some cash out of his pocket to pay for it. We need to record the cost of the job, so we're going to use the items tab. And in this example, demo disposal is the proper item to use. Let's say it was $120. Then we choose the job. Now this is a positive number because we want to create an expense. So it's just like any other transaction. But what are we going to do because we can't really write a check out of here. Um, what we're going to do is just like a journal entry, we're going to create an offset. It's not specific, specifically spelled out here as a credit, but remember, if a positive on this form is a, is a debit, a negative is a credit. For this particular example, we can click over to the Expenses tab and choose our equity account, which often, or, or a loan account, if it's a shareholder loan and you're going to pay the owner back at some point. Um, but just to keep it simple, we'll use an equity account. It might be called owner's draw, owner's contribution, shareholder distributions, shareholder contribution. Uh, just if it was the owner's personal money, the appropriate thing to use is an equity account. So we're just going to do a negative of the same amount and we are not going to put the job name on here because again this would show up at the bottom as no item and that's not our goal here. So oftentimes uh, the offsetting entry doesn't have a job unless perhaps you're moving some costs between two jobs. The important thing is that my uh, my entry is completely offsetting. I could have multiple line items here, whatever. The important thing is that the net amount of this check is zero. What we've essentially done is created a journal entry and use the items. You can use this for just about any transaction that involves job related costs. I hope you found this quick tip really helpful 
and I want to let you know that I always love to hear from you. You can send me an email with your questions, uh, pennyelaine at quickbooksnow.com. Visit my website at quickbooksnow.com for helpful tips and tricks for contractors and other types of businesses. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll always be notified of new tips and tricks that I put out. And don't forget to like me on Facebook and find me on LinkedIn.